my, my question is that everyone who reads DWM has got a favourite, you know, a, a particular article that drew them in, that really engaged them when they first started reading and changed the way they thought about Doctor Who. I mean, for me, it was that two-parter, Unsuitable for Children, I think, in 1984, which you know, I remember being absolutely gripped by that. I just wonder what everyone else's was. My one's easy. It's an issue two of Doctor Who Weekly, which is um, the unearthly child synopsis. But my, I, I couldn't believe it. It's, it's there. I finally learn about the very first story. So, uh, so yeah, that was very exciting. Nearly as exciting as seeing the preview for it previous week. Next week, unearthly child. Wow. So, yeah. Emily, how about you? Um, I briefly mentioned it earlier, actually, but it, it was all of Andrew Pixley stuff about series one. <laughs> Um, I'm a very strange person, but I I enjoy it, um, and I got a lot of excitement from reading it, and just yeah, there was so much I wanted to know about Doctor Who, and this this whole publication just delivered it, and that that changed the way not only that I thought about Doctor Who as a show and how it was made, but um, in terms of what the scope that there is to to write about it and to read about it. So that would be my one. Tom. Um, yes, I mean, as I mentioned, I was there at the start, but uh, I, I think, you know, my, my relationship with the magazine changed, obviously, as I got older, and there was a period, certainly, I think, when um, the, the series was off air, um, and uh, Gary Gillett had started editing the magazine by that point, and I remember really some of the things they did then, everyone um, who, who, who read the magazine at the time, I'm sure, will remember um, they went to a school and asked children what they thought of Terror of the Zygons. And this is in 1995, I think. So we're talking um, at a time when, you know, any eight-year-old would have probably not ever seen Doctor Who on TV at that point, if you think when when they would have been born. So, uh, you know, speaking to a class of eight, nine-year-olds, I think they were, um, about Terror of the Zygons, it was suddenly, you know, just a very innovative and new way to look at what what made a Doctor Who adventure and what uh, what made it work. Um, and uh, so I think anything like that where, you, you know, we all thought we, we knew that story, but suddenly we, um, we, we spotted new things in it because we were looking at it through someone else's viewpoint. Things like the time team always did that well. And, you know, the, the, those which, of course, again, started, I think, roughly around that same time, maybe a little bit later. And finally, Marcus? Well, I, I was there from issue one. I think it's um, I think it's Jeremy Bentham, really. I think he wrote the story of Doctor Who in issue one of Doctor Who Weekly, didn't he? But he also oversaw the... Um, there was a fantastic winter special, which somebody has just mentioned in the box that's come up on my screen, from 1981, uh, where all of the producers were interviewed, which I still think is one of the greatest issues of Doctor Who magazine. And, of course, now one that will be impossible to put together Um in, in that way and uh, so that was a very early highlight for me but to be honest I was I was hooked from day one. I, I still I still think um, looking back the printing of the, uh, the state of the archives back in 1981 was probably one of the oh. pieces of read I think I've ever had. Grim, yeah, yeah sobering stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it was back then thank the Lord for not in that position now. Mm -hmm.